Did you know that citizens are hiding dead bodies in Liwe? Well, what about the Kishing assassins killing off parents of a young child? Or maybe the fact that one of the playable characters was supposed to be made a sacrifice for the Adepti. Now, while walking along the crumbling roads and bland landscape of the Evernight in Enkanamiya, I start to realize that this is actually the first region that is just outright dark. And I'm not talking dark like some edgy backstory from a shonen anime. I'm looking at you, Sasuke. Or maybe even a god that stood over thousands of other gods in a war that we have no records of. Like seriously, why didn't anyone write about the Cataclysm? Were the humans like not able to write and read like 2000 years ago? I'm talking about in your face dark, like Itachi killing the whole Uchiha clan and finding out why in the end. Plots like betrayal or abandonment imprisonment until death or animal experimentation and and maybe even a little bit of tyrannically biased laws not just the heavenly laws but even aristocracy 2500 years ago in monstad and all of that topped with a bit of emotional damn it where you don't know if you're sad hungry happy or just wanna straight up die. And knowing that Enkanamiya is the only region that makes this type of dark plot apparent in both visual and story is surprising but also disheartening. Like did you know about the tyranny of the Lawrence clan and the fact that they hunted down a group of rebels until they were dead? Or the tragedy of Vindagnir and the one man who survived to shoulder the burden of a fallen kingdom? Or maybe the fact that Xiao's edginess is basically PTSD from being imprisoned by an evil god plus his role as a yaksha in the Archon War 2000 years ago. Now, I'll only be going over three dark lores for now, and depending on how this video goes, I might make it a series where I continue off into different regions within Devat. Some of you who are well versed in Genshin Impact lore might already know what I'm talking about, and a lot of you are already probably commenting and saying that Enkanamiya isn't the only region with dark lore. And in a sense, you're kinda right, but that reason only applies to the few of you who I can count with one hand who actually read lore outside of Archon quests and character quests. And I'm pretty sure the majority of players aren't really the type to read every book in Lisa's library in their first playthrough. So I made this video for the more streamlined players to be more informed regarding dark lore and even some Genshin lore in general. When I hear the words dark lore of Genshin, the first thing I think of is that dead body in Liwei's waterway. As bustling of a city Liwei is, there was apparently a dead body at Liwei's waterway, and it all happened as well as even continuing all the way until the lantern festival of all times. You can piece it together by talking to the guards and reading the notice boards in Liwa City. The guards mentioned that the water supply is contaminated. And reading the notice boards at the Ministry of Affairs Plaza, a young girl takes her own life at the water supply. Reading further, the father of the daughter mentions her name, Huachu, or Huachu, and that he was opposed to her marriage for a schoolmaster. But if you go to the stone gate, which is right here on the map, you will find Huachu, or Huachu, and the alleged schoolmaster there. In the Lantern Festival you also find and help them eat at an inn just outside Liwe Harbor. Some theories believe that they did one of three things. A chopped boar made to look like a human corpse, murdering another girl to the point that she is unrecognizable, or took a fresh corpse from the Wang Sheng funeral parlor and dumped it in the well. Regardless of which happened, such a story with some interesting individuals that walk the same path as the traveler feels pretty unsettling at least. The next story is gonna be in Dragonspine, which isn't really in Mondstadt, but technically is in Mondstadt, which is about the black dragon Durin and his relations with gold, along with his final moments with the Valin and Barbados. From the perspective of Mondstadt and from reading the Skyward Blade, as well as the book Freeze Amidst the Forest, it's clear that the people of Mondstadt bore their teeth against Durin in the story, calling him names such as Jealous, poisonous and attacking Mondstadt, which he kinda did, as well as mentioning the cries and screams of the people while his terror raged almost endlessly, until the heroes came, Barbados and Dvalin, and then defeated him. Pretty dramatic story about Barbados and Dvalin, right? Well, in stark contrast, if you read the entry from the Dragon's Spine Spear, you would be shocked to find out that while Durin was attacking Mondstadt, and even until the final blow on his neck by Dvalin, he was all but conscious of what he was doing immersed in a very very long dream. 
a dream where he went to a land filled with grass and so forth singing and joy could be seen among the people. He dreamt of dancing with a dragon that was as beautiful as a jewel. But when he opened his eyes, all he saw was a blinding white snowstorm. Pair that with the red blood and flames covering the green grass and the joyful song of the bard being drowned by the millions of terrified people. And the dragon he was dancing with now rended through his neck with its own fangs. Finally, as he lay on the white shining silver snow, he bid his farewell to his mother, which is gold, and said his farewell to the Valin and Barbados while wishing that they had met in a different circumstance than what had happened that day. Rereading that entry from one of the less used weapons in Genshin makes me even more sad because, well, barely anyone reads lore, and even more so because barely anyone uses the Dragon Spine Spear. Lastly is going to be a pretty secret story that only people who look around will find it. Now dark stories among the Adepti and Gods of Liwei are of common knowledge to anyone who played the Archon quests. You have Zhongli, you have Zhao, you have Ganyu, and you also have Shenhe, 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 the most recent character. But what if I told you that one of the Adepti characters that you have, or might have, Slice another Adepti's horns with their own hands. Uh oh! Now I know what you're thinking, it's not that. In the most minor parts of Liwei, in the glowing crowds of the Lantern Rite, you can only know about this if you check every corner of the event in Genshin. Or just go and ask Reddit or maybe the wiki. Regardless if you find it or not, the story will now unfold. One of the storytellers named Xiao Yan, an event exclusive NPC, appears at the Heiyu Tea House inside of the usual Liu Su. They look the same but they are not, so talk to NPCs whenever there's an event. Now this guy Xiao Yan only has one dialogue if you speak to him. And that is about the tragic, heroic, pretty dark tale, dark and untold story of the Sky Bracer. Remember that deer that ran around in the Lantern Festival? Yep, that is Sky Bracer. And the story before he died is pretty... hmm... Is pretty interesting. He was as bo he was boastful and powerful as any adepti would be. But one battle in the Archon War tore a chunk of Mount Tianheng, which is this mountain right here, and caused it to come down into the once small village known as Liwei Harbor. Eyebracer's quickest and toughest decision was to slice off his precious antlers gifted by Morax himself, and use the antlers to act as supports for the huge mountain slowly falling into Liwei. And the person who sliced off his antlers was a masked adeptus wielding a polearm, described as a formidable companion and called to Skybracer by merely summoning him, quote unquote. Hearsay has it that it was the Yaksha named Xiao. And by those accounts, it seems that he was called upon the same way the Traveler can call upon Xiao by just uttering his name. Sadly, after the battle, Skybracer fell because of the amount of blood loss that he lost from his antlers. It was said that the amount of blood that he lost formed the river around the Bishu Plain. If you don't know where the Bishu Plain is, it's this huge area right here. And all that water is the Skybracer's blood. Yikes. Again, however, this story ends with few to remember the tale. One such few are Madame Ping, and the Adepti himself who sliced the Skybracer's antlers off who is now forced to carry that burden along with the multitude of other burdens that he already carries as the lone Yaksha. And with that, I'm gonna end this discussion here for now. I might continue this starting with Mondstadt and then another one for Liwe and then finally ending it with Inazuma. I might try to find the saddest stories which... <laughs> very sad. <laughs> and continue on when I find something worth rambling about again. Now I know I've done a few streams of Elden Ring and that's just me trying to not get bored of what I'm doing which is, you know, making YouTube videos. But don't worry, I'll do a series of that every now and again depending on the game that comes out and depending on how much I really want to play the game. You can come visit my streams and comment, say hi, do whatever, chat with me, and you know, enjoy the game with me. As far as the video goes, these are just the three that came out of my mind and the ones that I felt were impactful enough to the newer or less uh, versed in lore reading players and is hidden enough to where no one would find out unless they started reading and putting together lore pieces. Obviously there's more than just these three that I mentioned, but maybe that was enough for me to convince you to look into more Genshin lore, yeah? Anyway, that's gonna be it for this video. I'll see you guys later. Bye!